Welcome to our family channel. Oh. This is our Wong family this channel. Went, this went to my mom. They can see this, is it? Mommy, ah. Tiffany, <laughs> and mommy's. This went to my mom, and this one's my brother, and this one's our dog, and this one's ah. our daddy, silly daddy. Oh, silly daddy. Why do I get introduced after the dog? <laughs> Because because you're silly, Dad. You're silly. Yeah. All right. And how old are you, Sadie? Um, Cody's um um three years old, and Connor's three years old too. Yeah, well, Connor's and, and I'm five years old. And we also have a little baby named Abel, who yeah. we left inside he, the house because he's crying. He was crying, yeah. and he doesn't yeah. want to be in the video. He's kind of like Daddy. He doesn't like to be like. He, Daddy, <laughs> Daddy, you are you are. You are crying. You are crying too. You're crying. <laughs> Dad, Daddy's you're, a baby. Daddy, you are a baby. You are crying. Okay. Say. Can you guys say subscribe? Subscribe <laughs> to our family channel. Okay. All right. You guys go inside and play. And mommy and daddy will finish recording. The kids are gone. They're not really gone. Tell you about how we feel about them. <laughs> you want me to talk about how I feel? <laughs> okay. So we wanted to welcome you guys to our Charlotte family Taller. channel. Um, so in this channel, you will see a lot of us. <laughs> Her. You probably want to see more of me, right? Then, oh, I don't know. A lot of people want to see him, but um, when you just, <laughs> let's tell let's tell them a little bit about our history. Okay. You want to go first? You want me to go first? You go first. You're more interesting. Oh, okay. So. I am, man, I'm 40 years old. I just turned 40 this year. Um, I was born in Hong Kong, um, and I immigrated here with my family when I was eight years old. And then, um, yeah, just, you know, my parents wanted that American dream for a family, the freedom and the opportunities um, in America. And, you know, my parents never went to college and that's exactly what they wanted for us. They just wanted us to, you know, get, you know, a college degree and, you know, get a good job and just be happy and live that American dream. And here we are. So, I came here when I was eight. And? I flew here. I didn't swim. <laughs> it wasn't a boat. It wasn't a boat, man. Okay. But your pops wanted something different. Your pops actually was doing well in Hong Kong. Yes, he. My dad was actually a. He was a ch editor in chief. He worked for a newspaper company. He was a. He. He was a journalist. So, um, he got really good pay, and. But he wanted to come here because he believed that, you know, in America, you know, the opportunities is endless and the freedom. He always tells me like, number one is the freedom. And that's what he wanted for his kids. Even though it was hard at first because, you know, we didn't know how to speak English. Um, and, you know, we only know how to speak Chinese. So it was hard at first. I mean, we were living in someone's garage. It was one of those, like, in-law units in San Francisco. It was like we had to pass by someone's car to get into our little unit. Um, but, hey, he did it. He made it happen. And even though he worked, like, seven days a week. What was he doing? What? You tell what he was doing. Well, he owned a restaurant, yeah. and he How worked... How many restaurants? Well, at first, he only had one, and then he ended up with five. And man, that was like a crazy time. It was a pretty famous restaurant. Um, ABC Bakery Seafood Cafe. and ABC Bakery Cafe. And you guys had... Five, five at one point, at or one six, point. At one point. six at one point. And it was, I mean, it was, it, you know, in other people's eyes, it was like, wow. You guys are doing really good, but they didn't know, the, you know, the sacrifice that the family had to make in the back. You know, like, you know, we never went, we never had like a day off. My parents worked <laughs> every day. Um, my parents never like get to take us to school or pick up, pick us up from school because they're always working. You know, when we left for school, they were still sleeping because they work nights. Um, and the weekends, there's no weekends, you know, we went out to the restaurant and we helped out in the kitchen and, you know, we wrapped and we helped baked and, and all the little stuff, you know, me and my sisters would do. So, but that was for us, that was like amazing because our parents were trying to survive and try to provide for us. And that's all we know. And our fun trips were 
going to Reno. <laughs> Vegas. Vegas. Well, that was like more towards like the end, you yeah. know, like it was more Reno and Circus Circus. That was like <laughs> our playground. We never even went to like, you know, that many playgrounds back then because our parents were so busy, you know, we, you know, got off, uh, like, like, you, like we went, came home from school, we just did our homework. We didn't go to parks, we didn't do any of that kind of stuff, so. Your pops passed early. My yeah, dad. My dad passed when I was twenty years old. Man, why are you trying to get get all deep and stuff? I thought this is like a whole, like <laughs> trust circle thing. We're just, okay, just our, it's true. We are sharing stuff. our life with you guys, and you know we're very happy too. Um, <clears throat> so my dad passed when I was twenty years old, and ever since I was like maybe around like sixteen, my dad always tells me like, "Hey, I want you to go back to Hong Kong and try out for Miss Hong Kong." And for me, growing up, I was very much like a tomboy because I think my dad didn't have any sons in the family, so he always treated me like a like a like a boy. So you know, so we did a lot of like competition games. We did a lot of like you know those like driving games, and we played balls and like it's all like about like whatever. So he wanted something more. He wanted me to be more girly. Um, he wanted me to you know just get an experience that I will never be able to, and you know. <clears throat> and I did that after he passed. I kind of, in a way, fulfilled his dream. Um, and I went back to Hong Kong and I tried out for Miss Hong Kong. And that was the best life experience I've ever experienced in my life. Um, it was pretty, I mean, it's not something that I, you can learn in college or you can learn from textbooks or anything. It was just, it was just like experience. I mean, um, it was life changing for me. I've learned so much and I've made some really good friends and um, and I and I won. <laughs> it was kind of cool. I won and I stayed there for like two years and I basically traveled the world and um, you know talked to some amazing people. Um, I've learned a lot about hard work and work ethics and um, I got to say I married a pageant queen. <laughs> we we met before that. <laughs> Yeah. Lucky you. <laughs> I came back. And that's it. I came back. Um, I'm not. And you had a career in showbiz. I had a career. There, and why did you come back? Aside from me. <laughs> why did you come back? I came back for my family. Um, you know, I gave up the whole whatever fame and whatever thing. I'm, I'm just not that kind of person. Like, what? Did, I'm not really like. That would didn't make me happy. I wasn't a person. I didn't. I didn't I, like the acting thing. Didn't interest me that much. Um, that wasn't me. I mean, and I knew what I wanted at an early age, and I wanted to be close to my family, and I wanted to finish college, which I, I was only a uh, third year when I left um, for the pageant. So I wanted to finish college. I wanted to um, come home for my family. I wanted to, you know, basically take over my parents' business and help them grow and expand. And that's what I wanted. I wanted, you know, I knew what I wanted. I, I knew what made me happy. So I came back and, and this is home. <laughs> and Hong Kong felt like um, a second home to me. But, you know, I was born there. And I made some amazing friends and they made me feel at home. Like I was, I was definitely homesick, but they definitely made me feel at home. And I am so, so grateful for them. And I still talk to them all the time. And, um, yeah, you just you make lifelong friends. So, your turn, Mister. Mine's easy. That's how I want to go second. Hi, I'm Doug, and i um, graduated from Sacred Heart. I was born in San Francisco. <laughs> I never really left San Francisco. <laughs> um, I didn't do Mister Hong Kong. <laughs> you wouldn't have qualified. You had Probably to be born qualified. in there, you know, born yeah. in Hong Kong. And I swear way too much. No, it's okay. I swear too, but no. Yeah. Yeah, I was born in San Francisco, um, private school, Catholic, private school actually. Actually, our stories are pretty similar, you know, your grandma and grandpa came That's here. true. I should, yeah. back that, I should back that crap up. Um, what happens? Let's see. Uh, dad's side was born in China. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, uh, actually they're, they're pretty well off, but then the whole Mao thing. Mao Zedong Com thing, yeah, and then the, the communism, communism thing took over. Um, took over, and they took all their stuff. And then my grandpa left early to 
the U.S. to hit San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, his first job was actually at an Irish bar um, down wow. downtown that's somewhere. Um, maybe that's why I like drinking, drinking so much. But anyway, he left early, worked there, saved up. Um, China sees sees my uh, my dad and grandma's um, you know property, whatever, and um, it's kind of a cool story. But is is like they found out early from the folks in town because my mm -hmm. grandma used to write letters um, for the entire village and, and, and she was the only one that could write and send it back and pay for the postage to send it back to the U.S. Let folks in the U.S. know how they're doing. But anyway, they, mm -hmm. they got the heads up that, hey, they're coming to take all your crap, so you better, you know, Break get the heads up. up. So they packed all their stuff and literally got on a boat and just all the way to, to Hong Kong. To Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So dad, uncle, and grandma spent a um, good amount of time in Hong mm -hmm. Kong until grandpa saved enough money to send them over to San Francisco. And that's a pretty typical story, actually, if you ask a lot of, like, like um, families, families stuff, right? the immigration, immigration, that's, that's mm -hmm. a very, very typical story. And, um, yeah, like, that's, that's how it was, it was all about the same story as her, just, just, just escaping, um, some stuff that just wasn't, they didn't what, feel right, right? Well, it just didn't mm -hmm. feel right for yeah. whatever reason. I don't want to get into details of, of, of you know, democracy versus communism. And all Let's don't go there. <laughs> On this channel, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, but yeah, they came here, and then that—that's—that's that's how uh, that's how we got here. Mom's story yeah. was a little more straightforward. She just went from Hong Kong over to here just yep. for education purposes. So, yeah, um, you know, all our all our parents or grandparents came here for for a specific reason, and 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 that boils down to freedom and opportunity, um, and um, yeah. that that kind of carries over to both of us. Uh, we have a lot of pride. And being in America, despite you know it's, today it's it's, yep. it's weird times and there's a lot of bickering between between sides and all that <laughs> stuff. And, and, and um, you may not agree with all of it, but it comes down to you know there's a lot of sacrifices that was taken yep. to for us, us to have the ability to do whatever the heck we want. Essentially, you know we don't have to slave away seven days a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. To provide for our family, you know, the foundation has been set and. Um, my story is pretty straightforward. I mean, I, I was I was pretty pretty blessed growing up. Strong, solid middle middle class. Um, I was a private school boy. Yeah. Went to uh, Sacred Heart Cathedral, um, and then UC Davis. We um, both went to Davis. Went to, that's where we met. UC that's Davis. That's where we met. Um, go Aggies! Woohoo! Go Aggies! Um, totally different college town now, but it was a good college town. Um, and then after I graduated, um, got into tech space, lived in Silicon Valley. I did that for a good amount of years, 14 years. Yeah. And um, I, got, I got nothing against tech or the tech industry. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't, um, you know, sitting in an office under, like, fluorescent lights in a chair. I work for great people. Uh, my boss is cool as hell. Love We're him. still close friends. Um, but I just, I knew yeah. right away it wasn't for me. And it was kind of like a spoiled perspective that I get to have by saying like, hey, this great paying job, not for me. Yeah. I quit. Or not quit, but like when, when transitions in the company happen, I'm like, you know, it's time for me to try something else. So um, <laughs> right around me. the time <laughs> when she sold off all um, the ABC assets in the business. Um, I told him <clears throat> specifically to not get into the restaurant business. <laughs> so I got in the restaurant business. <laughs> and, uh, but it's doing well. He is, that's his passion. He loves cooking. I don't say it's my passion. I just You're say, pretty like, passionate about food. Like, he loves food. He's just like my dad. Like, I think my dad got in a restaurant business because he loves eating and he loves, he's super passionate about food. And that's why he got into the restaurant business. And I think same thing with you. You love food, and he's super creative. You can throw him, like, any ingredient, he'll just, boom, come up with something, like, super yummy. It's simple. It's not, like, all these, like, spices and all these, like, sauces. He's not. It's, like, super simple, super good, and it's healthy. So, so I got into the restaurant business. So then he got into restaurant business. Yay! <laughs> this is when I do the noise. <laughs> Smacked in the middle of COVID season. <laughs> yeah. By the way. By the way, yes. Uh, but yeah, it, but it's you know, thriving. I got, you know, this, this is like, I guess coming full circle where I started my story and her story is 
all the sacrifice that was taken is allowing us to be spoiled or brats and say, okay, Get to instead, of, instead of grinding one job out for like <laughs> the next 40, 40, 50 years, whatever. Yeah. It's like you get to literally start over and try something new. Exactly. And you really can't do that in many other places in the world. This being one of the darn places that you can do yeah. so. Um, and yeah, and then, you know, we got that going. And then now now we're dabbling in, in just overall coming up with some creative content. And Tuna Kahuna. Go there if you're in the Bay. Go and eat there. I was talking about now we're doing this. Oh, okay. But yeah. go and eat there yeah. first. <laughs> um, so now now we're dabbling in this. And, yeah. and it's, our, it's our opportunity to kind of yeah. have fun with, with creating cool content and showing... Um, we're dabbling um, into this, yes. whatever this is. This and is our fun YouTube channel. They get, I mean, we just get to, I mean, we're doing the same thing we're doing, but we're just recording it and showing everybody and well, sharing she, it. She has sisters that are younger, well, younger yes. sisters. And like, we're at that gap. We're, we're, we're born in the 80s <laughs> yeah. and we're 40 now. And like, we're, we're probably the only generation that's going to experience pre-internet and then post-internet. In fact, internet happened when in college, literally, like, Ethernet cord, or, I remember getting Davis, like, you gotta get Ethernet cord, I was like, dude, I have a telephone bar, I was like, no, you get an Ethernet cord, I was like, what right. the? you give them away our age. Whatever. So, <laughs> They're not and then, and then we, we're slow adopters, but um, her sisters kept nagging, it's like, why don't you guys do a, a YouTube, I was like, a what? Mm -hmm. A what tube? And then... We knew what YouTube was, but we weren't, like, a big social media person. Like, we're not, like, you know, we're very much... A outdoor and like we're always doing things person like we're always doing projects all the time we have like literally ADD uh, we're always doing things for our house and special projects that we do at home and cooking and playing with our kids taking them to like all these adventures and stuff like that and Monica or my little sister just like you need to share that you know with the world and you know and I said it well, took her a year Especially living here in, in, in the Silicon Valley and in, in <sighs> New York yeah. City, like, I always felt like, me yeah. personally, I was, just, I was like, it's not, okay. so, uh, I always felt like, you know, I, I always felt like con confined, like an animal in the zoo, and, and it, yeah. there's not enough area for, 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 for us to play, um, so we live in a tiny house because it's Silicon Valley that costs a fortune, but um, aside from that, you know, we, we try to get, we try to get out. And, or we try to bring it out in yeah. here, so we, we have a little, we have a place where we maximize completely where... 100%. Just <laughs> walk around the corner, there's there's 16 waterfowl, um, ducks and chickens living in a, in a, in a pen. We have um, 16 ducks and chickens in our house. As far as we know, we I probably lost them. count. I probably um, lost count. We have two new ones. We got this guy. We got a big golden Um But we try, we try to, we try to bring the kitties out as, as much as possible. Um, mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's a whole bunch of land out there, free that we we have access to. Um, National forest that we take take them out all the time. Go swimming, go hiking, go fishing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I got hunting um, a few years a few years back as kind of like an extension of my love and enjoyment for the outdoors and yeah. It's really opened up a lot of different avenues. At the same time I got into, she got into kind of growing her veggie yes. garden. So. so we're very much, you're going to see a lot of, um, we, we try hard to have that sustainable lifestyle. So he does a lot of hunting and he hunts like deers and ducks and like quails and pheasants and stuff. And you're going to see a lot of the cooking side, like him butchering stuff and us cooking and then us having a garden that we actually grow our own vegetables. We don't grow up, I mean, we don't, we still buy some like fruits and vegetables, but a lot of them we actually grow from our garden and then it's kind of our way of teaching our kids, you know, the circle of life kind of thing too. So you're going to see a lot of that. Yeah. She's kind of a weirdo about organizing. So you see a lot of, see a lot of that going on. I am crazy. I am like insane and okay, I'm sorry, but I am like, I don't know. I think it's like, <laughs> it's like that. When you have kids, you have a family, you have all these things going on, it's like that chaotic like life that you you want something that you can control. So having an organized and clean home absolutely brings peace to you too, okay? So don't just blame me. He is all about she, cleaning. She has his look though. <laughs> organizing. She, don't that, make me swear on it, lo it looks like that, okay? I'll come home like... Freaking, At like 12 a.m. All the cabinets are, are out. 
and and then like there's top wars everywhere and I look at her and I'm like what the heck? oh okay I'm gonna I'm gonna wear this every time you come home when I'm cleaning like if I have a day off when he's like honey just like chill go do whatever and I'm like okay I like take everything out of the cabinets and I'll reorg you you just want there's things change and you just always want to have a more efficient way of living yes so what are you gonna see on this channel fun you fun see. stuff me and him we're so much fun i mess with him all the time is he gonna organize and clean organize and clean for you guys i'm gonna i'm gonna like share with you all these hacks that i have like accumulated the past whatever years i've been living mini fun projects diys we're gonna outdoor build adventures. an outdoor kitchen and Doug is gonna build another garden and he's gonna build a garden for his mom. So you guys are gonna see oh. that. That's gonna be so fun. I'm late on that. And I'm gonna have to plant all her vegetables. <laughs> and um, lots of outdoor adventures. Um, hopefully Doug will wanna share some of his hunts with you guys. Uh, he's gonna do lots of cooking. I'm gonna I'm the assistant, so you're gonna see a lot of like assisting. I'm I'm the one usually I'm the buyer of the family, so I go and I buy and you know and he's kind of like the chef so I go and buy all these stuff all the healthy stuff oh you can see a lot of healthy like what recipes because we're all about juice smoothies um, soups nourishes like your body and that kind of stuff we do a lot of that too so I buy everything and he is the boss in the kitchen he Am cooks I, boss? I feel like I'm the Oh, well, you know who's the boss. Yeah, I'm the boss. I'm not, definitely not the boss. I'm just calling you the boss in front of the camera. The kids are the boss. <laughs> the kids are the boss. So you're going to see how a lot of them. Um, our kids are amazing. Um, most of the time. They are actually really good kids. They hardly throw tantrums. Um, even, even with this COVID thing. Um, because we are very much a not that much sweet. Like, we don't give them that much sweet. Like, we don't give them candy. We don't give them any junk food like those, like, gummies. We don't give any of that stuff. Because we believe that that will cause them to act, what, unre unreasonable. Crack. It's, it's literally crack. We think that candies and stuff like that is, like, crack. For that little body, like, we just believe that we don't, we try not to give them that. And I think that's another sometimes. reason. Well, sometimes, yeah. Like, Halloween or... Um, sometimes we on the treats. weekends we give them little treats and but we don't completely cut them out. <coughs> we're, not, we're not those crazy people. That no, we still like. No sugar. We still give them some like dessert, she, she, ice cream. She was eating Doritos in bed last night. Oh my god, I was editing. Okay, I, let's I don't got, go into that. I got a video of it. She's eating um, Doritos. Okay, we show that later. <laughs> it's disgusting. Anyway, so you're gonna see a lot of us and our family and having fun and you know just a day in our lives and like what we do and especially with this whole COVID time and. You know, this is all new to us. I we literally just got into YouTube two weeks ago, <laughs> right? Yeah. I so to look. this is like super fun. I think for I'm us. looking over there. And, you know, it's almost like just like a fun project, and you know, sharing our lives with you. So, um, yeah, cooking, health, sustainable living, outdoor adventures, hunting, fishing, hiking, camping. Our little parenting tips that we like to share with you. You know. Sleep, I mean, I don't know, sleep training, potty training, oh my god, you know, and, you know, things like that. So, you know, um, we'll love for you to follow our journey, and we're super excited to be doing this, and, you know, remember, god, I love this part, remember to subscribe <laughs> to our channel. I'm enjoying this now, because you want to see this face all the time. This sexy face. <laughs> okay, so thanks, guys. Um... You know, we'll see you next time. Remember to like this, uh, like this video, make a comment, let us know what you guys want to see. And yeah, we'll see you next time in our other videos. Bye guys.